Good morning, MC Kids, and hope you're all having an awesome week and super excited to learn about God this morning. It's so amazing that we're all still able to come together and learn about God from the comfort of our home. I know the times are coming challenging and a lot of us are struggling with the fact that we can't meet in person on a Sunday, but we're at least able to still come together and actually learn about God from the comfort of our homes. Are you all excited to learn about Jesus this morning? I know I am. So this morning, we're going to be looking at a story in the Old Testament about Joshua. Does anyone know the story of Joshua? Wow. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But before we start, let's open in prayer. Hands together, bow, close our eyes, bow our heads. Father God, I just want to thank you that we're able to all come together and learn about you. Even though we're coming from the comfort of our home, Father God, I know that you've got this for us. You've got a plan and a purpose, and I know that you have a destiny that everyone's going to fulfill, and a purpose and everything that we're all going to work out according to you, Father God. And I just want to say thank you that you're with us through all these times and we're still able to learn about you even though we can't meet in person. In your name, Amen. So boys and girls, but before we start, I just want you to all remember an amazing memory verse for this morning. And that is Luke 6, 31. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Okay, boys and girls, so I want you all to start and watch the video and hope it's really going to help you and see what it's like to become a true leader. All of us are going to be a leader at some stage in our lives. And there's different types of leaders at schools, leaders in the workplace. But that's what we're going to learn about is how Joshua became a leader. God's story. Joshua becomes leader. So part of God's story is about when Joshua became leader of God's family. And it goes like this. Remember how God rescued his family when they were stuck as slaves in Egypt? He made a path right through the middle of the Red Sea. He showed them where to go with a pillar of fire at night and a cloud during the day. He gave them water from rocks and sent food like rain every morning. Best of all, he promised to bring them to an amazing new home called Canaan. All they had to do was trust him. But sometimes people have a hard time believing God will take care of them. So for a whole year, God's family worried and complained. They felt like they'd never get to the promised home where they would be safe and comfortable. And even though God was taking care of them every day, they kept worrying that he'd stop. But their leader Moses trusted God with his whole heart. And one day, God told Moses to send 12 men into Canaan as spies to see how great it was. So Moses did. And one of those 12 men was Moses' helper, Joshua. He trusted God too. Well, Joshua and the other spies spent 40 days in Canaan, and they discovered that the new home was as good as God had promised. There was delicious food, water flowed nearby, it was paradise. It had everything God's family needed and wanted. There was just one teeny tiny problem. People lived there already. Big people. Big people who lived in a big city called Jericho that was protected with really big, strong walls and the people there did not plan to give up their home. So 10 of the spies came back terrified. They said, we look like grasshoppers compared to the people there. When the rest of God's family heard that, they got scared too. They didn't want to go to the promised land anymore. But Joshua knew that no problem is too big for God. He and another spy named Caleb argued, if the Lord wants to give it to us, he will. After all, God had shown his family how powerful he was. But even though God had always provided for his family, they still chose not to trust him. And because they made that choice, there was a consequence. God kept his whole family in the desert for 39 more years. So long that all the adults who chose not to trust that God could take them to the new land spent the rest of their lives in the wilderness. God kept taking care of them, of course, but life was nothing like it would have been in the promised home. The good news is, there was a blessing for Joshua and Caleb's obedience. They did live long enough to get to Canaan. See, God always keeps his promises. So eventually, he took his family into the promised land, and God chose a new leader to take them there, a guy who would trust him with his whole heart like Moses had. Yep, Joshua. And that's the story of when Joshua became the leader of God's family. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God took care of his family. He promised them a new home. They had to trust him. Twelve spies visited Canaan. People already lived there. Joshua and Caleb trusted God. Most of God's family got scared. God's family stayed in the desert. 
God kept his promise. Joshua got ready to lead God's family into the promised land. And that's a part of God's story. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this morning's lesson and really learned on how Joshua was a leader and how he became a leader and God sent him to be a leader. As I know a lot of us are going to be coming up to being leaders and, you know, it's all exciting times ahead and all of us want to be a leader. I know I do. And be the leader in the church, be a leader in, you know, workplace, wherever it might be, be a leader. And even be a leader amongst your friends. Rather be a leader than a follower. Because followers are like sheep. They all follow and they just say yes sir, no sir behind the leader. We all want to be leaders and make an impact because we are God's children. So we hope you all had an awesome week and have an awesome week and really enjoy today's uh, lesson and the video. And we hope that we see you next week. Have an awesome week guys. Cheers. <laughs>